So this time I'm doing it old school and prepared slides. I'm sorry, but I also got a brilliant demo. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very simple. Um, and uh, sorry for standing next to the stage because I have to push the button. Okay. But you can see me if you can hear me, I hope. Um, my name is Stefan. I have the best job title ever. Uh, my job is to stand here and talk to you. I'm the developer ambassador of the Kreuzberg. We are uh, primarily a commerce company. My hobbies are going to hackathons, especially blockchain hackathons. Sometimes I'm winning, sometimes I'm not winning. And now I will tell you a story about a hackathon that I did not win. Um, because the better one has won. <laughs> and we came up with a nice idea. Uh, but first, an intro. Since we are a commerce company, some call it the customer journey. The customer journey until the checkout in usual stores looks like this. First you search something, then you browse the products. Then you again search for something, then you watch or you look at the product detail page. You go back, you go to another product detail page, you might like this one. Um, then you click on an ad, uh, you, 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 you browse through the recent items you have watched, and then you go to the product detail page, and maybe, ah, no, you found something, add it to the cart, you go to the cart, and then you finally proceed to the checkout. Now, you're already there and say, okay, now I found the final product, and you say, take my money, and I can finalize my order and pay lots of money now, and then this is happening. Uh, do we have that account already? <laughs> yes, uh, do you know your password? No, I forgot it. Okay, then please create a new account. Um, or do you want to create an account? No, actually I don't want to. Okay, then please create the guest account. And in the end, it always will be this. You always have to put in lots of data just to leave your money there. Of course, you could pay with Bitcoin if they accept it, but this is usually not the case. So, um, yes, of course, when you, this is from my point of view or from the Kreuzberg's point of view, state of the world. Uh, this is a screenshot I did. You will not be able to read it. My name is written somewhere there, but this is a usual checkout form. They even splitting it to accordions so they don't show all the forms all the time. <laughs> it looks more pretty. And I have two quotes for you. I copy from the internet. There is no source, unfortunately. I will just read them. If you want to increase form conversions, you must consider reducing the number of fields. If you really need extra info, consider doing an ABC test where you compare all of your fields and so on and so on. So this is, I think this is an expert. I don't know him personally, I don't know. But he's from Unbounds and he tells us this. Now she says, top tips to boost form completions include, top tips to boost, to, to boost form completions include <laughs> repopulating as many fields as you can, like fill in all the data, offering a tick box if billing and shipping are the same to reduce the need to complete two forms. Placing error messages, showing coupon code is not important. Okay, but you get the point. So if you already fill the form for the customer, it's more likely that you maybe buy something in the end. Uh, okay, <laughs> solution. <laughs> Login with Facebook. This is not the best idea because then also Facebook knows what you are buying. At least from our point of view. This is why we usually never put or no, never tell our customers to put this kind of button on the web pages. So uh, during that hackathon, uh, do you want to take a picture? You can have it here. There you go. It's also on, on the interweb. You have to Google for Facebook data theft. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no source in it. I won't upload the slides because Mr. Foss will uh, prevent it. Um, so during that hackathon, we came up with the idea, since we're an e-commerce company, let's integrate a self-sovereign identity solution with a headless commerce system. Who of you knows what headless e-commerce is? Sounds like zombie. <laughs> Um, this is one. So, if you know, maybe, I don't know if you ever worked with e commerce or shop systems, they are mostly written in PHP. And um, View Storefront is a, is a mainly, it's, it's, it's a system that sits on top of Magento, more or less, and allows you to write quite modern applications on the front end. Um, well, to do exactly the same thing Magento has done in the past, but much faster. And yes, uh, we are not affiliated with them in any way. We never used them before, but during the hackathon we said, okay, but maybe we can use this front end heavy system to integrate it with Yolo.com single sign on. These are some details about your storefront, which might be not that interesting to you. If you're not in the e-commerce sphere, this is why we skip this one. Yeah. This is how it looks in the back, and you can you notice all oh, they're doing quite a bit of stuff. They 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 <coughs> pull data from Magento from Magento and they're, they're pushing back something and then they're splitting an API layer and then you can consume it on the front end. This is really developer stuff, okay? Who of you is developer? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so Helicon, as you might have noticed already since you're here, is uh, so what they are offering next to many other things are uh, is is a demo how to do single sign-ons uh, in the documentation, and this is what we found during that hackathon. They of course, as you already have seen, have this mobile smart wallet app, and uh, this is why I asked the question: They're relying on job-based data exchange and jobs are signs. So in case you don't know what a jot is, forget the word, it's quite secure. <laughs> um, so our challenge was integrate Yulocom with new storefront without knowing both of them. Uh, there's codes, there's more codes. If you can read them fast, you can take a picture. I can also open a GitHub repo, never mind. <laughs> time for the demo, because I don't have that much time. There's the link, link here, I guess. Now, it's amazingly simple because we did not do that much. This is uh, the standard view storefront implementation with the standard view storefront products. Bear with me, this is clothing. I don't know why they put clothing there, but you notice this. This looks like a shop. What do you want to buy? This one. The Diva Gym Tea. Uh, hopefully it's on stock, yes. Now we have a checkout. And usually now you will come up and fill out your form. Actually, at this point of the checkout, there is already a form, which tells you, oh, please log in or enter your name and enter your address and enter your, your pet's name or something. <coughs> I hope it's working. Yes, you notice this one from uh, his demonstration. And unfortunately, I cannot show you my, my mobile phone screen because I don't know how to do it this, but sometimes, OK. <laughs> I tried like this, OK? You can see it. This is starting up, it's brand new. How long is the iOS app already on the App Store? Not that uh, long, it hasn't no, been there. No, actually, yeah, three, it's two weeks, three, three, three weeks. It hasn't been there in January. This is why it was really hard to test on the hackathon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, it's working because if my phone is doing something, then it's asking me, do you want to fill in your data? Unfortunately, I'm not that good in Yulocom. I only can transmit my name there. So I will just tick the button. Yes, OK, I want to share the claim. And now it should disappear. There it is, and there's my name. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it was supposed to work on the hackathon, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you see that it's really working. Mm -hmm. Maybe the demo. The advantages, and this is already my last slide, I guess. The advantages of using self sovereign identity um, instead of uh, well, well known single sign on mechanism as Facebook is obviously. Facebook don't know that you want to buy underwear. The shop owner doesn't need to know your birthday. <laughs> he only needs to know that, that you have money. You now have to retype all your profile data every time. And the shipment providers uh, can ask for extended details when they are needed. So if you think this further, you can actually say, OK, shop owner, my, name, my first name is Stefan, I have 50 euros here. I will just pay. And then you hand over the box to the shipping provider, and he will ask me, I don't know what your name is, I don't care, but I need your address. So you can split the amount of information that you need for the fulfillment process. This is actually the, the basic idea we have. We only managed to put in the name four. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, well, it's working. And it was not that simple to integrate, but it was fun. This was us, <laughs> and it was buy by ID. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And uh, yes, this was it. I don't even have a closing slide. So <laughs> this one. Thank you.